Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video this evening I am going to be giving you an update on some more transfer news so I am going to be you know, giving you an update on Liverpool's transfer news like I've been doing on a regular basis recently and also I am going to give you the latest news regarding Alexis Sanchez but I'm going to delve into the Alexis Sanchez topic a bit later on in the video. So we'll start with Liverpool's transfer news. Uh, Liverpool, of course, have got quite a few players on their agenda who they could sign in the summer. Because realistically, you know, Liverpool don't really need any more signings, but they do want to make more signings in the summer. Of course, Liverpool did sign Takumi Mina Mimo. Uh, obviously, you know, before the January transfer window opened, but it officially got confirmed on the 1st of January in that. And obviously I do believe that Takumi Mina Mimo will get more in the team next season in that. So possibly, you know, Liverpool could sign Kaya Havertz in the summer. Now there's been a lot of speculation about Kaya Havertz going to Liverpool in the summer and that. Also too, Bayern Munich have been interested in Kaya Havertz. But I think reportedly, you know, Bayern Munich have got doubts about recommending him in. So Bayern Munich, you know, may not get, you know, signed Kaya Havertz in the summer. Um, obviously, you know, Liverpool have expressed an interest in the player. I think my club, Manchester United, have been in for him in the past. He is uh, only uh, the age of 20. He currently plays for Bayer Leverkusen. And up until this point, he has spent the entirety of his career with Bayer Leverkusen. But he is only uh, the age of 20. And despite that, is the only despite that he's only the age of 20, he has made 131 appearances in all competitions for by Leverkusen. Now, if Liverpool do want to get him this summer, Liverpool will have to pay a substantial amount for the player. I think by Leverkusen have quoted that they want over 100 million pounds for him, and that is a lot of money, you know, especially you know for a player that's only 20. So you can, you know, basically say he's still inexperienced at the moment in that. But he is predominantly a central midfielder. You know, he's a Kaya um, Havertz and that. But like I mentioned, revert back to what I said, quite a few clubs have been in for Kaya Havertz. But obviously, you know, how is he going to get in Liverpool's team? I think Adam Lallana is expected to leave on a free transfer. I think he's one of the players that will leave Liverpool this summer. But I do believe Liverpool will get rid of players in the summer anywhere. They could get rid of around four or five players. Obviously, Naby Keita, you know, maybe Liverpool could, should consider moving him on. You know, he's another one of their midfield options. Naby Keita, you know, doesn't really uh, get him in the team. You know, Georgina Wanyadam, you know, could he be possibly, you know, moved on? So they'll need to get rid of quite a few midfielders. So Kaya Havertz can obviously, you know, get her there um, in the team and that. So I think his actually, you know, preference is a move to Liverpool. But it would be interesting to see if he came to the Premier League, you know, how he would do. Because obviously he's done really, really well in Germany in that. So if he comes to the Premier League, do you think he'll be able to replicate what he's done in Germany with Bayer Leverkusen and that? So I think Liverpool have identified him as their number one priority or target for the summer. But they've also got quite a few other players on their agenda. You know, obviously, you know, Mbappe has recently been on their agenda, but I don't see Liverpool signing Keelan Mbappe. I think he actually, you know, could end up staying at PSG, could Keelan um, Mbappe. And I'd like I mentioned, I don't see how he'd get in Liverpool's team anywhere. You know, they've got the likes of Firmino, Salah and Mane as their attacking trio. So he'd basically be there for the backup, you know, with Keelan um, Mbappe. I think the only way Keelan Mbappe, if he went to Liverpool, the only way he'd get his chances is if Liverpool like sold Salah or Firmino. But I'm very, very sceptical that they're going to sell any of them players, you know, this uh, summer and that. But uh, revert back to what I said, if Liverpool do not uh, get Kaya Havertz in the summer, I read one report about it, it did say you know, Liverpool could consider going in for Philip Coutinho. Now, of course, Philip Coutinho is a former Liverpool player, as you all know. He did enjoy five years with Liverpool with Philip Coutinho. And I think, you know, Liverpool will maybe regret, you know, getting rid of him and that, you know. But obviously, you know, everyone thought Liverpool would have crumbled when they lost the likes of Philip Coutinho and Luis Suarez. You know, but I think Philip Coutinho himself now may regret, you know, ever leaving Liverpool because he could, you know, won quite a lot of trophies with them, you know, Coutinho and that. So it says Liverpool could go back in for him. I think Barcelona, you know, have said, you know, they'll let him go on a cut price fee. I think Liverpool would still have to pay over £100 million for him and that. You know, don't forget Barcelona did pay um, £142 million for him from Liverpool. Was it in January 2018 or the summer of 2018, if I can remember rightly? So Coutinho is like, what, the third? 
third most expensive player in the world, or is he the fourth? I think he's just behind, uh, you know, Neymar and Mbappe is Philippe Coutinho. Obviously, you know, he's, he was very, very poor at Barcelona. He's currently on loan now at Bayern Munich, is Philippe Coutinho. But I don't know if there's any option to buy her out. You know, obviously, Philippe Coutinho, Liverpool made a huge profit on the player because Liverpool got him from next to nothing. The only paid around was at £8.5 million pounds for him from Inter Milan because actually Coutinho began his senior career with Inter Milan. He also had a loan spell with Espanyol, so I think he's played under Pochettino's guidance because at the time he was on loan, Mauricio Pochettino was manager of Espanyol because that's where Pochettino began his managerial career and that. So I think Coutinho is in his, like, is he 27 or 28 years of age now? So he is highly experienced. He can play as an attacking mid and he can also play as a winger. So I don't think they'll get him back, but he says if they miss out on Kaya Havertz, Havertz, you know, they will go back in for Philip Coutinho, reportedly. Obviously, you know, Termo Werner, you know, from RP Lesbig, you know, he's another player on Liverpool's agenda. Also, my club, Man United, have expressed an interest in him before. You know, Jadon Sancho, he still remains on Liverpool's agenda. You know, my club, Man United, in for him. Also, Chelsea have expressed their interest in Jadon Sancho and that. You know, Jadon Sancho is a very, very um, good uh, player. Like I said, he's well proven in the Premier League. He's enjoying a difficult time at the moment with Borussia Dortmund is Jadon Sancho because, like I mentioned, he has, you know, been dropped in quite a lot of games this season for Borussia Dortmund. But, you know, obviously the main explanation why he went to Borussia Dortmund and, you know, left Man City is because he didn't get any first-team opportunities at Man City. And before he was at City, he was at Watford. But um, anybody, you know... That's in for him. Obviously, you know, would have to pay around one hundred million pounds because obviously, you know, Borussia Dortmund have quoted out that they would want a hundred million pounds if they would be convinced, you know, to offload Jaden Sancho, and he's still under contract with Borussia Dortmund until two thousand and twenty-two. But he is predominantly a right winner, and he can also play him centrally. You know, I'd love him to come to Manchester United, Jaden Sancho. If I'm going to be uh, quite uh, honest with you, so they are Liverpool's, uh, you know, transfer targets in that. But, you know, Liverpool, you know, wanted to make more signings in the January transfer window. Like I mentioned, didn't really need any. But reflecting on the injuries that Liverpool have had this season, you know, they wanted to, you know, get some signings in, you know, for the cover-up for their uh, current um, injuries. But, you know, they didn't, obviously. You know, Liverpool have just had Fabinho. He's just come back from injury. You know, Chamberlain's just come back from injury not too long ago. And I think he's rejuvenated himself since he come back from injury. You know, obviously... You know, who else come back from injury? You know, Shakiri did initially come back from injury, but he's back injured again. Is Shakiri? Nathaniel Klein's out injured. I think Mane could. He's going to be back for their game against Norwich at the weekend. Is it? If I'm right, yeah, he's going to be back for the game against Norwich at the weekend. So Liverpool have had quite um, a lot of um, injuries uh, this season. You know, James Milner, he's another one out uh, injured. But I think he's still going strong, James Milner, despite the fact that he's in his 30s now, isn't he? You know, James Milner, you know, so they have had um, a lot of um, injuries this season and that. But, you know, Liverpool, you know, have, are on course, you know, to win their first ever Premier League title. You know, so they are going to end their 30-year drought. Liverpool needs six wins out of their remain out of 13 they need six wins out of 13, you know, to currently uh, win uh, the Premier League. They win the Premier League this season. It will be their first ever Premier League, like I mentioned, and it will be their 19th overall. So that means they'll be just one behind us because, you know, we've won 20, you know, Premier League. You know, we've won 20 titles, 13 Premier Leagues and seven old first divisions. So Liverpool need six wins. Obviously, if Man City don't beat West Ham, then Liverpool, of course, need five wins. Obviously, they go up against Norwich at the weekend at Carroll Road. Liverpool are looking to extend their unbeaten run to 43 in the Premier League. You know, they've won 24 games out of 25 this season. We're the only team this season that have taken any points from them. And Liverpool have gone almost three years now without losing at Anfield. So, obviously, you know, Anfield is um, a fortress. But they are sitting 22 points clear at the top. I think they're like, what, 23 or 24 points in front of Leicester are Liverpool. <coughs> but like I mentioned, you know, they have got um, a really, really um, good uh, squad and that. But I think, you know, the players that will leave Liverpool in the summer, on the other hand, you know, they'll want incomings Liverpool, but I think they'll also get rid of players. You know, I think they'll definitely get rid of Nathaniel Klein because Nathaniel Klein is very injury prone. Plus, he doesn't get in Liverpool's team now anywhere because... 
Obviously, you know, Trent Alexander-Arnold is Liverpool's first choice. Obviously, up until this point, Trent Alexander-Arnold has, you know, spent the entirety of his career with Liverpool. You know, he's been a Liverpool player, you know, since the age of six, I think, as Trent Alexander-Arnold. But he is regarded as one of the best right-backs in the world now. Um, I think they'll get rid of at least one of their centre-halves because Liverpool have got a lot of centre-halves in their team. I think... You know, possibly Joe Matip will go, maybe not this summer, but in the future. I think Deja Lovins also a player, you know, a player that Liverpool will consider getting rid of. You know, they've got Joe Gomez in there, you know, but they have got a lot of centre halves in their team in Liverpool. I think Lovren will go in the summer, or Liverpool will look to get rid of him in the summer. Uh, Adam Lallana, like I mentioned, he'll go with Adam Lallana. Um, I think Dick Overigi will also be moved on. Um, he's made a Big impacts for Liverpool as Dick Overigi. You know, like I mentioned, he's a good backup to the likes of Mane, Mane, Salah and Firmino. And, you know, he's done really, really well. I think one of his best games as a Liverpool player was, you know, that Barcelona game last season when Liverpool did produce that miraculous comeback against Barcelona. You know, because Liverpool don't get overcome a three-goal deficit from the first leg. And I think Dick Overigi scored twice in the second leg at Anfield, if I'm right. But he's um, a good backup, he's a Riga. You know, Shakiri, I think he'll definitely be moved on because he tends to make an impact from the sub. You know, Shakiri isn't um, a 90 million pound player. So if they get rid of some players in the summer anyway, you know, they'll generate more, you know, money in that aspect and then they'll be able to get the likes of Kaya Havertz in and possibly, you know, their other transfer targets, you know, that they do want, you know, to currently uh, recommend in. But, you know, Liverpool. You know, I've got a fantastic goalkeeper in Allenson. You know, I don't think overall he's the best in the world, but I think at this present time, he is one of the best, is Allenson. Uh, you know, they've got a fantastic full, two, two fantastic fullbacks in Alex Arnold and Andrew Robinson. Liverpool only paid £3 million for Andrew Robinson from Hull. You know, you know, they've got Virgil van Dijk, you know, the best centre half in the world. You know, they paid £75 million for Virgil van Dijk. And I think he's actually you know, Liverpool's most expensive sign, is he? And I think he's also one of their highest player players. But Virgil van Dijk is, you know, the second most expensive, you know, defender in the world and that. And so basically, you know, he's much better than Maguire and we paid five million pounds more for Maguire than what Liverpool paid for Virgil van Dijk. You know, and I think they've got a lot of good midfielders in the team. Like I mentioned, Chamberlain's done well. He's a bit injury prone because he's sustained quite a lot of injuries as a Liverpool player. I thought he was good at Arsenal, Chamberlain. He also did well at Southampton when he was younger. I thought Fabinho was a good buy for them. You know, they got him from Monaco, Fabinho. You know, so they've got a lot of midfielders in their team of Liverpool. You know, like I said, Kaita should be moved on because I said he doesn't really get in the team. I think they got Kaita from RP Lesbig. Salah, um, I think he's recently rejuvenated himself. He hasn't been to his best this season. Like I said, look at his stats. He has created a lot of chances this season, but Salah hasn't, you know, really had that clinical element. I've got to be honest, I think Mane and Firmino have been in much better form than Mohamed Salah. You know, whether you can, I think you can play Salah centrally, but whether you play him out wide or centrally, you know, he just hasn't been so good this season. I think his predominant position is playing out wide is, you know, Mohamed Salah's, to be fair. But Mane is a player that can also score goals and he can create chances and that. You know, and I've been impressed with Firmino this season. I've got to be a uh, very, very uh, honest to you. But Liverpool's, you know, Liverpool, like I mentioned, have got a lot of good players. You know, their senior squad isn't only good. I think they've also got a lot of, you know, young players, you know, that are coming through and that. And, you know, we saw, you saw the glimpses of how good, you know, Liverpool's youngsters are in their 1-0 win against Shrewsbury in the FA Cup fourth round replay. And Liverpool, of course, have progressed to the fifth round of the FA Cup, you know, for the first time, you know, since Jordan Klopp got recommended in. But Jordan Klopp did play the under-23s against Shrewsbury, and I thought they did really, really well, to be fair. You know, I think Curtis Jones, not a bad player for Liverpool, you know, first season in the senior squad, isn't it? You know, Curtis Jones has scored, like, two senior goals for Liverpool so far. You know, they've got Harvey Elliott, they've got... You know, that like Liam Miller who played against Shrewsbury, you know, they've got that Nico Williams, you know, Liverpool may consider getting him a new contract. I think he's still under contract with Liverpool until 2021. You know, Van der Berg did well at centre half against Shrewsbury. You know, they had uh, I think they were playing Leighton Clarkson and Jake Kane in the midfield, you know. So yeah, Liverpool fielded um, all their under twenty threes out basically. And Jonathan Klopp did get a lot of criticism for that. But obviously, you know, on the other hand, Liverpool have played a lot of games this season, so Jurgen Klopp wanted to basically, you know, rest his senior players in that. 
But, you know, Shaw's bait, from their perspective, would have been infuriated with it because they wanted to verse Liverpool's first team. But on the look, on the um, um, look at it another way, though, you know, Shawsby would have been delighted, you know, taking, you know, the game to a replay anywhere because, you know, they would have generated money for that. That was Shawsby's, obviously, you know, first ever time um, at Anfield. So take that um, into um, account. So right back to what I said, yeah, Liverpool have got a lot of young, good players coming through. Obviously, they've got Adrian, who's their second choice goalkeeper. <laughs> Who was their uh, second choice uh, goalkeeper? So, you know, I take that um, into um, account and that. But yeah, Liverpool are definitely going to win the Premier League this season. So, that means it will be their fourth major honour under Jurgen Klopp because they've won three major honours since Jurgen Klopp got recommended in. The most recent one was the FIFA Club World Cup. The, sec uh, the one early on this season, they won the Super Cup against Chelsea. And obviously, you know, they won the Champions League at the end of last season against Tottenham because they beat Tottenham by two goals to nil. And they may win more than the Premier League this season. You know, I think Liverpool have got a great chance of winning the Champions League because they are into knockout stages and they have got a fantastic pedigree in the Champions League. They are the most successful Engl uh, English club in Champions League history because Liverpool have won the most Champions Leagues in England, obviously. In English clubs, they've won the most Champions League. Obviously, overall, Real Madrid have won the most Champions Leagues. Liverpool, of course, have, you know, they won the final last season. They got to the final of the season before against Real Madrid, but Real Madrid, of course, did beat them by three goals to one. And Liverpool have got Atletico Madrid in the knockouts. And I think Liverpool will overcome Atletico Madrid over the two legs because, like I mentioned, Atletico Madrid are in, you know, bad vein of form at the moment. They've enjoyed a difficult season. You know, Diego Simeone's enjoyed their years at Atletico Madrid, don't forget. Um, and I don't think Atletico Madrid have been the same team since Anton Griezmann went, to be fair. I know they've also had a lot of um, injuries, but I think Liverpool will overcome then, and I think Liverpool will progress to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Liverpool won't win the FA Cup because, you know, like Klopp confirmed, it's not a priority for Liverpool is the FA Cup. You know, Liverpool haven't won the FA Cup since 2006, so that's like, what, 14 years ago now, the last time Liverpool won it. I think they've won it around seven or eight times. Liverpool, of course, have got, um, you know, Chelsea in the fifth round of the FA Cup, but, you know... But, yeah, like I mentioned, you know, Liverpool are going to win the Premier League this season... You know, but you know they've come close on quite a few occasions. Like I mentioned, you know, last season they was unlucky not to win it because last season Liverpool finished on ninety seven points. They finished one point behind Man City last season, and obviously you know they came close under the Brendan Rodgers era. You know because they enjoyed one good season under Brendan Rodgers. You know obviously they came close back in two thousand and nine. So they have come close on quite a few occasions of Liverpool to, to of you know come close on quite a few occasions. So, you know, currently uh, winning uh, the Premier League and that. And, you know, Jürgen Klopp, you know, he's got a contract with Liverpool until 2024. So, he's got a f now, you know, he's going to be at Liverpool. He's guaranteed he will be at Liverpool at least for the next four years. But I've got to say, you know, Liverpool, Jürgen Klopp is the best manager they've had, you know, in this generation anywhere. But they've had some good managers over the years. And, you know, they've also had some, you know, uh, Bad managers, you know, to be quite um, honest with you. But I think the bad managers they had were Kenny De Gleesh. Comparisons as a player, because I thought he was a good player, but not a good manager. You know, Roy Hodgson wasn't so good for them, you know, to be honest with you. But, you know, Klopp is, you know, best the best they've had in this current uh, generation. I think when Klopp does eventually, you know, leave Liverpool, he will probably, you know, make a return back to Germany, you know, to be um, honest with you. But he's always had the style of player, like I mentioned before, Jürgen Klopp. You know, he also had this style of play when he was at Borussia Dortmund. And, you know, I think he won a couple of titles, did he, with Borussia Dortmund. Before he was at Dortmund, he was at Mainz 05. He actually got relegated with Mainz 05. But, you know, Liverpool's only the third club he's managing. So he hasn't managed a, a lot, a lot of teams, as you know, Jurgen Klopp. But I think Liverpool are now going to start to replicate what we did in the 90s and, the t in, you know, the 2000s up to 2013 under Alex Ferguson. I don't think Liverpool are one season wonders. I think they're going to continue this consistency in that because, you know, they will get more signings in and they'll look even stronger than they are now, you know, to be quite um, honest with you. 
But yeah, so that's everything to update you with, you know, regarding Liverpool's transfer news and everything else you do need to know. Now I am going to delve into the news regarding Alexis Sanchez. Now I've been reading reports today regarding Alexis Sanchez and it does say that, you know, Man United are trying to find a buyer for Sanchez in the summer, despite the fact that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer recently suggested that Sanchez will come back to Man United in the summer and he will prove everybody wrong. Now, as you all know, Sanchez at the moment is on loan with Inter Milan. Obviously, his appearances have been limited at Inter Milan. Uh, the main explanation is because Sanchez has been injured. So this is why he hasn't had his opportunities at Inter Milan. Obviously, you know, despite the fact that he's on loan at Inter Milan, no, Man United are still paying the vast majority of his wages. I still believe we're paying him around £300,000 a week. Um, yeah, and Inter Milan, I think, are paying like the other hundred odd thousand pounds a week to the player. But you know, if we recommend Sanchez back, it is a bad decision from the football club and that because Sanchez is a flop. You know, we had, Sanchez endured eighteen months at Manchester United. Obviously, sustained quite a lot of injuries as a Man United player. Sanchez made forty five appearances for us in all competitions and only managed to score five goals. He is still under contract with the club until two thousand and twenty two. We couldn't really get rid of Sanchez on a permanent, you know, trans. We couldn't get rid of him on a permanent deal because, you know, reflecting on his substantial wages. Because Sanchez was on like what four hundred grand a week at Man United, potentially rising up to half a million pounds a week based on the image rights and the bonuses, etc., etc. So this is why you know we couldn't offload him, you know, uh, permanently in that. But, you know, I, I don't want to see him back at Manchester United in the summer. Obviously, you know, Solskjaer's seen is that, you know. He will add more transition in the final third. Obviously, you know, we've been looking for the replacement for Sanchez and Romelu Lukaku. Anyway, I know obviously we've got Odina Gala win until the end of the season, but he's only on loan until the end of the season. I can't see us getting Odina Gala in on a permanent transfer, to be quite um, honest with you. But, you know, like I said, I'm happy with us getting Odina Gala win anywhere because I think he's a good backup to, you know, Rashford because Rashford's going to be out for at least the next couple of months. And also, he's a good, you know, alternative to Martial. But revert back to what I said about Sanchez. I was surprised how bad he was for Man United because I thought he'd have done well for us. We got him as part of a swap deal of Mkhitaryan going to Arsenal in January 2018. And he didn't exceed expectations at Man United as I thought he would have done. You know, because he enjoyed a good three or four years with Arsenal. He obviously played under Pep Guardiola's guidance when he was younger, did Alexis Sanchez. So I thought he'd have done really, really well for us, to be fair. But now we're trying to find a buyer for Sanchez. Will Inter Milan, you know, possibly try to make the deal permanent for Sanchez and that. So that's uh, the latest uh, news uh, regarding him. Also, I've been keeping up to date, you know, of what, you know, players, you know, Manchester United um, are in for in the summer. Because from my own perception, I think we need to make around three or four signings in the summer if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club. And if we are, you know, to be up there challenging for major honours, because in the summer there's still deficiencies in the squad that need to be addressed. And, you know, I think, you know, at the moment City strides ahead of us, like I mentioned, Liverpool strides ahead of us. And, you know, it's it's going to, you know, take us several years, you know, to emulate to City and Liverpool's level. It's going to take us a lot of time because I think Man City have finished higher than us in the last, what, in the last four um, or five uh, years and that. The question is, will Ole Gunnar Solskjaer be here, though, in the summer transfer window? If he is, it will be his fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Because obviously Solskjaer has been at Man United now 14 months, almost. He's been permanent manager for almost 11 months. So Solskjaer's obviously you know, had three transfer windows at Manchester United and he has recruited five players in. Obviously last summer he recommended Daniel James and wan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And we spent in total nearly £150 million on them. And in the January transfer window he recommended Bruno Fernandes and you know, Odin Agarlo in. So I think in total, Solskjaer spent over £200 million on Manchester, on, at Manchester United since he got recommended in. Obviously, we do know on the other hand, though, a lot of players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. You know, around nine senior players left the football club last summer. And, you know, I still believe there's a lot of deadwood at the football club that do, do need to be uh, currently uh, moved on without a shadow worm of a doubt. There's still a lot of deadwood at the club anywhere. Um, I'll give you, uh, you know, the news yesterday regarding Solskjaer. Um, obviously, it's been revealed uh, we will sack Solskjaer on one condition. 
if Man United fail to finish in, if Man United f fail to finish in the top six, so basically if we finish out of the top six and we don't get, you know, any Euro and we don't qualify, you know, for Europe, then Solskjaer will be sat as Manchester United manager and I think, you know, Manchester United have made this clear. If we do uh, finish within the top six and we do get Champions League football or if we, you know, whatever, then, you know, Solskjaer, you know, will be given another season at Manchester United because this is currently his first full season at the club at the moment and that. But I think one mistake Man United did make was giving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job on a permanent basis. You know, the main explanation why I would give him it on a permanent basis is reflecting, you know, what he did when he was the interim manager because he did really, really well in that three-month period when he was the interim manager, you know, did, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. And we didn't really pay that much, you know, to Mould to get him in on a permanent basis. Obviously, you know, when Solskjaer came in anyway, he got a huge increase on his wages because he's on seven and a half million pounds a year now at United. He was only on four hundred grand a year at Mould, you know, with Solskjaer. So he got a massive increase in his wages and he's got like what two and a half years left on his deal, but I'm very sceptical, you know, he will see out, you know, the remainder of his two and a half year deal at the football club. But Solskjaer is aware that he's been under intense pressure this season. Obviously, you know, because we've enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. And, you know, since he got the job permanently, you know, we've lost more games in the Premier League than we've won. So uh, take that um, into um, account and that. And, you know, his record is absolutely you no know, disastrous. But I think Man United, you know, we've heard back to what I said regarding the transfers. I think we'll spend a substantial amount in the summer. Um, I think, you know, we're going to get Jack Grealish in the summer if, you know, recent reports are to be believed. Uh, reportedly, like it updated yesterday night, it said Man United had agreed the personal terms with Jack Grealish ahead of a summer transfer. The personal terms have been agreed. Um, it's been revealed that he's got around the 45 million release clause in his Aston Villa contract. Um, would we have to pay this £45 million or would we have to pay more than £45 million pounds to get Jack Grealish in? You know, the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid, Barcelona and Man City have been in for him, but reportedly, according to the mainstream media, his preference is a move to Manchester United, and reportedly Jack Grealish is searching now for a house in Manchester. But I'd love Jack Grealish to come in, and I would be excited about the prospect of him coming in, you know, him playing alongside Bruno Fernandes in our midfield. I think they will complement each other fantastically well. And then if we get Jack Grealish in, we don't need Pogba anywhere, because, you know, you can say Jack Grealish is the adequate replacement for Pogba, you know, well, Bruno Fernandes is the replacement for Pogba. Some United fans would still want us to keep Paul Pogba, though. But if Jack Grealish comes in, you know, I don't really think, you know, we need uh, Paul Pogba. You know, Jack Grealish, up until this point, has spent the entirety of his career with, you know, Villa. So he is well Premier League proven. He's been an Aston Villa player since the age of six. You know, he made his senior debut in 2014. And I think he's become an integral part of their team and... I think he's gone on to make over 100 appearances for Villa since he broke into the uh, senior uh, squad. Can play as an attacking midfielder and also can play as a winner. And he is only at uh, the age of 24. And don't forget, Solskjaer does want to continue with the policy of recruiting young players to Manchester United and that. So I think he could be our first signing in the summer. And if Solskjaer is to be still here, our sixth signing overall under the uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era and that. And Jack Grealish, I think, still got a contract with Villa until 2023. But I'd love him to come in, definitely. Uh, James Madison was initially our preference over Jack Grealish, but obviously, like I mentioned, James Madison is closing in on signing a new deal with Leicester. So I'm very sceptical that we'll get James Madison in the summer. So in the summer, hopefully, you know, we can get another midfielder, we can get a right winner. We possibly need a left back uh, because obviously Luke Shaw struggling for you know consistency and he's sustained a lot of injuries as a Man United player. Obviously Brandon Williams is our you know first choice left back now, but he can you can obviously still say that Brandon Williams is inexperienced, so we possibly you know need a left back. Maybe possibly we need another centre half. Uh, I know Harry Maguire's done really really well since his arrival from Leicester last summer, but. We're still conceding goals, and like I updated you earlier on, Manchester United are in for Koulibaly from Napoli. It's been revealed he's got a £127 million release clause in his Napoli contract, so this is how much Man United would have to pay to have any chances of getting Koulibaly on the board. 
you know, imagine that, you know, Colour Bliley alongside Harry Maguire in our back line, you know, they complement each other fantastically well. You know, but I think a few clubs have been in for Cooler Barley in that. But he would dramatically improve his defensively, you know, if he was to come in and that, you know, Cooler Barley. So he's another player on our agenda who we could go in for in the summer and that. But I think the players that need to leave Manchester United in the summer, like I mentioned, I think we need to get rid of Phil Jones. We need to get rid of Nemanja Matic. We need to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We need to get rid of Andres Pereira. We need to get rid of... We need to get rid of Chong because he's not at that level as yet. Possibly need to get rid of Luke Shaw. You know, so these two players that need to leave Manchester United definitely. But all them players I just said to you are all now liabilities. But on the other hand, you know, these two players at Manchester United, I would be determined to keep definitely in that. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again soon.